What's up boys and girls, it's me Mr. Bradley and in today's video we're going to be learning about my favourite thing of all and that's food! And to do that we're going to go all the way to Sri Lanka to do a cooking course and visit some fruit and vegetable markets in the country. We're also going to cook a mighty meaty barbecue feast, my favourite food of all. And we're even going to go to this weird cow merry-go-round thingamabob. It's so strange that you can't miss this episode. Today we're learning about food groups. What's up guys, it's me, Mr. Bradley, and this video comes with an important message that may hit hard with some people. Although as a teacher, I want every one of my students to be confident and comfortable in their own skin, the harsh reality is that child obesity is on the rise, and although I want my students to be happy, I also want them to be healthy and to live a long and good life. Before we begin today's lesson, I am a teacher, not a nutritionist, so you may take what I say lightly, but I aim to educate parents, teachers, and students about food groups, healthy eating, and iron out some misconceptions and just some plain old dated information to help us all understand how to live a healthy and full life. Let's go. Eating is one of my most favorite things to do, and one day I hope to break the record for being the fastest man on earth. Aha, I've done it. I'm just messing with you, but I do like good food. But what exactly is good food? Is it good tasting food, like tasty burgers and delicious pizza? Or is good food healthy food that's good for our bodies? Our body needs many nutrients for us to survive and, well, you know, like not die. And those six nutrients are carbohydrates, fats, protein, minerals, vitamins, and water. Oh, oh yeah, and then we got Fiber, who really wants to be a nutrient, but is he really a nutrient? I don't know, it's debatable. We don't really absorb fiber into our bodies. Fiber is just there to push everything along, if you know what I mean, so, so we can go to the, you know, to the toilet. Anyway, we'll go into that in another video about nutrients. Today, we're learning about food groups. To make sure we get all of the nutrients that we need into our body, it's very important that we eat a variety of foods in our diet. To do this, we tend to put foods into different food groups and try to eat a little bit of all of the food groups. Foods are normally organized into five main food groups, and those food groups are fruits and vegetables, foods high in starchy carbohydrates, foods high in proteins. The next food group are dairy products that are made from milk, and the final food group are fats and oils. First food group we're going to learn about are fruits and vegetables, and to do that we're going to take a trip to Sri Lanka. We're doing a cooking course with Vanita. Where are we going? And now we go to the vegetable market. The vegetable market in Gaal. And what kind of Sri Lankan foods can we cook? Many different Sri Lankan vegetables have. Can we have them all? More six plates. Six plates? Perfect. Fruits and vegetables come from plants and are full of vitamins and minerals that keep us healthy and stop us from getting sick. Root vegetables, as the name suggests, come from the root of the plant and include vegetables such as carrots, parsnips, turnip, potatoes, onions, garlic and beetroots. These vegetables are high in minerals, good for your eyes and very high in carbohydrates which give us energy. It's important to be aware that if you eat too much carbohydrates and don't burn off all of the energy that it gives us, it can be stored as fat in your body. Other types of vegetables include leafy greens such as broccoli, rocket, spinach and kale. These vegetables are high in vitamin A, C, E and K. They are excellent at preventing cancer, however they are quite low in energy. Because they are low in energy, these vegetables are good for people to eat who have been advised by their doctor to lose weight. Moving on to fruits. Fruits are high in antioxidants and are also good at helping to prevent cancer. Fruits also contain some carbohydrates and sugar, which is probably why they're so delicious and sweet. Eating plenty of fruit is good for your body, but just be aware by eating lots and lots and lots of fruit, especially dried fruit, which we often eat in a bigger amount, can lead to a very small weight gain.
Fruit and vegetables are also super high in fiber, so just be careful that by eating too much of them, you might end up having to go to the toilet with explosive diarrhea. And nobody wants that. If you're not quite sure how much you should be eating, it is recommended that we eat five portions of fruit and vegetables a day. Ha <laughs> ha, a nice try. Fruit juice, canned fruit, and whatever these sorry excuse for fruit are, do not count because they are packed full of sugar. Go ahead, ask your dentist if you can, because you probably have no teeth. Time to learn about carbohydrates. Oh my gosh, look at the pigeons. Look at the pigeons. I think, I think we should get out of here. This is gonna be the next one. We've gone from coronavirus to bird flu. Time to learn about carbohydrates. I don't know why I'm in a field and the pigeons are going crazy. Let's get out of here. <laughs> well, hello, did somebody say sugar? This sugar is sugar. And when I eat it, it gives me lots and lots of energy. If I don't do lots of exercise and use all of this excess energy, my body will store it as fat. The nutrient carbohydrates are long chains of sugar molecules that are chemically bonded together. In other words, carbohydrates are like tiny little sugar trains. There are different types of carbohydrates, but this food group we're talking about are foods that are high in starchy carbohydrates. Foods that are high in starchy carbohydrates include root vegetables, where the plants store their energy, such as potatoes, carrots, parsnips, beetroot, onions, and other foods that are high in starchy carbohydrates are any foods that are made from cereals. Cereals are grains that grow, such as rice, wheat, oats, barley, and corn. We can eat most of these grains completely on their own, just like eating rice, or we eat oats and porridge just the way it is, but foods that are all also made from these grains are also high in starchy carbohydrates. For example, if we grind down wheat to make flour, we can use flour to make things like pasta or bread, which will therefore also be high in starchy carbohydrates. And of course, breakfast cereals are made from cereal. That's why they're called cereals, duh. We've got rice krispies made from rice. We've got corn flakes made from corn. We've got wheat to bix made from wheat. The most nutritious things you can eat that are high in starchy carbohydrates include brown rice, quinoa, sweet potatoes, whole grain bread, barley and oats. Pasta and regular old potatoes are also fine to eat now and again, but they are very high in starchy carbohydrates, so should be eaten in moderation, or if you exercise a lot. Avoid eating things with refined carbohydrates in them, such as white bread, pastries, and anything made with white flour. And be careful when choosing breakfast cereals. Most of them are very high in sugar, even the ones that claim to be super duper healthy. In fact, pretty much all of them are, except for plain old porridge, or as some of you like to call it, oatmeal. Now let's look at some incredible rice fields I visited in Bali in Indonesia. What's up guys, today we're learning about protein, and protein is for big muscles, and the only place that we get protein is protein powder. Let's get those gains. Hmm, well that doesn't make much sense. Although you can take protein shakes to get a little bit of extra protein, it is not necessary unless you're specifically training for something. In fact, we can get all the protein that we need on our diet from various different food sources. Foods such as meats, eggs, beans, fish and nuts are all great sources of protein. We need protein to grow and to repair cells in our body, like when we injure our skin or muscle fibers. The healthiest foods to eat that are good sources of protein and low in saturated fat include egg whites and fish, such as tuna, salmon and prawns. For those of you who do not like fish, poultry, those are the birds that we eat. Hello. 
Poultry is another option, although it is a little bit higher in saturated fat. If poultry is what you want to eat, then go for the ones with the least fat, such as turkey, which is very high in protein and low in saturated fat, or chicken, which would be the second best option. Beans and nuts are excellent sources of protein and highly energy dense. This means that they are great for eating when we're trying to maintain our weight or when we're trying to gain weight. Red meat, on the other hand, should not be eaten as often as poultry. This is because red meat is high in saturated fat. Eating too much red meat can lead to cancer, diabetes, or even heart failure. Red meat should be limited to 70 grams a day, which is the size of a very small steak. If you must eat red meat, eat it in moderation and go for a lean cut of meat. This means that there's not a lot of fat on the meat. A healthier way of cooking red meat would be grilling it instead of frying it in more fat. Do not be fooled by processed meat. Processed meat is not as healthy as normal cuts of meat. Processed meat is meat that has had chemicals added to it to make it more delicious and tasty. However, a lot of the time, these chemicals are very bad for our health. Foods such as chicken nuggets, hamburgers, hot dogs, bologna, beef jerky, pepperoni, and many more are all processed meats and should be avoided. Today, we're going to be having a protein party. We have many foods that are good sources of protein, some healthy, some not so healthy. We have the first. Shit. Honey. Salt. Push the turf. Was good. Fabulous. How was the food? <laughs> Lovely. Absolutely excellent. How did you fit it behind your mask? to learn about is dairy. Dairy is made from milk and as you know milk comes from cows. So today I'm here at Platina Farm to learn a little bit more about dairy. Oh hey there! Platina Farm was founded in 2014 by the state of Qatar and is home to over 14,000 cows. Here the cows are milked in these giant groceries with amazing cooling systems to keep the cows happy and cool in a very hot country. And a happy cow means tasty milk. Utterly amazing. Yes. I think this piece is very moving. Unbelievable. Hmm. Perhaps I'm milking it now. Dairy products are foods that are made from milk and include things such as cheese, butter, cream, yogurt, and milk. And Come on, duh. In this food group, we're also going to include some dairy alternatives for those people who are either vegan or can't consume milk. These alternatives can include almond milk or other nut milks, soy milk, and of course, tofu, which is made from soy. Dairy products all have one thing in common. They are very high in a certain mineral, and this mineral is called calcium. Dem bones, dem bones, dem bones. calcium. Dem bones, dem bones. Calcium is a very important mineral in our diet because it's needed for healthy teeth and bones. But of course there's a catch, there's always a catch. The problem with dairy food is that a lot of them are quite high in fat. To limit the fat that is associated with dairy foods, we should try to choose milk that is low in fat, or better yet, fat free. Instead of choosing these sorry excuses for cheese, come on, this is not cheese. It literally looks and feels like plastic. You should go for things such as cottage cheese, which is also high in protein and quite low in fat. Instead of choosing these delicious looking yogurts, come on, look at that thing, oh. You know that tastes good, and every time they taste good, it's bad for us! No! Why 
is that? Why? So instead of eating these yogurts, now and again go for something like Greek yogurt, which is also high in protein and quite low in fat. It's super good, a little bit of honey, it'll do fine. The final food group I'm going to talk about today are fats and oil. Wait, fats? Did he just say fats? But I thought fats were bad. Not exactly. Fat is packed full of energy, so we should consume a very small amount. However, fat is a vital nutrient in our diet. We need it to keep us warm. We need it to protect our organs and we need it for energy. However, it is very important that we choose the right fats to eat. There are different types of fats. Some are good for our body and others not so much. When talking about fats, there are two main types saturated fats and unsaturated fats. Saturated fats are often considered the unhealthy fats and are easy to spot because they're normally solid at room temperature. They are found in things such as fatty meats. Other foods that are quite high in saturated fat include butter, cheese, cream, full fat milk, processed meats, and a lot of unhealthy snacks. Saturated fats are often called the bad fats, and the reason for this is they lead to an increase in the bad cholesterol in our body, LDL, which can lead to blood vessels becoming blocked and eventually heart disease. As far as I know, most of us don't want to die of a heart attack. Unsaturated fats, on the other hand, are known as the good fats. They are easy to identify because they're often liquid at room temperature and are found in foods such as avocado, olives, nuts, nut butter, fatty fish, chia seeds, plant oils such as olive oil, sunflower oil and rapeseed oil. Unsaturated fats reduce your risk of heart disease and also promote the good cholesterol in the body called HDL. So those are the five different food groups. So I guess I just make sure that I eat the same amount of all of these foods and I will be healthy for the rest of my life. Wrong! You actually are not supposed to be eating the same amount of each of these food groups. This is why the Eat Well Guide was created to pictorially show us in the form of a pie chart how much we should be eating of each different food group. The Eat Well Guide was released in 2007, replacing the old Eat Well Plate, which just had a few things in it that were, just weren't quite right. For example, it counts fruit juice, which is very high in sugar as a portion of fruit. His examples for fats and oils include things like chocolate and buns and donuts. So just be careful which guide you're using, especially teachers. Make sure you're teaching the Eat Well Guide and not the Eat Well Play. So we've come to the end of our video about food groups. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more cool and interesting educational videos. If you are a nutritionist and you have noticed something I've said is not quite right, please by all means educate me and I will be happy to share that in a future video. Don't forget to check out some of the other videos on my channel, such as my various ancient Egypt videos that I filmed while traveling around the country of Egypt, or perhaps you'd like to learn about deserts while also seeing some powerful off-road vehicles rip through the sand, watch the desert from a bird's eye perspective while I paratry hundreds of meters above the desert, or even watch me come across some various desert plants and animals firsthand whilst traveling to five different deserts around the world. Thanks again for watching the video. If you haven't subscribed already, please do. It's completely free to do so. All you have to do is click this button in the bottom right corner and it takes one second to do and really helps me out. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time.